Welcome back to the Jungets Games playthrough for Sea of Nadia. At this point, we have played through the first few rounds of the game, and that happened in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, then you can find a link for it down below in the description, or you can click the I up there in the top corner. Now, as always, I'd like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I really might make mistakes as we play through the rest of the game, and that lets me put corrections on the screen, which will make this as accurate a playthrough experience as possible. All right, let's jump back into it. At this point, we are starting the second round of the game, and the blue player is the Admiral. That means they can roll all three of the dice and then assign these out to the players. With that roll, we see a couple new symbols. This one says you get three actions and the wheel compass action. Now that is the astrolabe for this game, and that says that a player with this will get two extra actions if they have two or more cards. We do have another new icon, which is the anchor symbol, and that die face will give that player three actions plus this action. Now, in this game, that is the dead man's compass, and this says that you can use this compass as if it was one of the six resources. Now, it's important to note that this is usable only once, and you can use it at any point during your turn, of course, if you have this symbol on your die. Well, the blue player now needs to make their decision, and they have decided they will give this cursed die over to the red player, they are going to keep the anchor, and they will give us the wheel. After that, we can all start taking actions, and the blue player as the admiral goes first. So they get three actions, plus they can activate the dead man's compass. In this case, they are going to start by moving here for one action, and then they are going to spend their second and third actions loading up these resources. After they do that, they are out of their main actions. But fortunately for them, they still have this bottle, which they can get rid of in order to get one extra action. So now they are going to use this in order to open up this silver chest. Now remember, in order to do that, you need to give up two of the purple resource and one of the green. Well, the blue player currently has one green and a blue, but they can use their blue talisman to make that blue resource act as if it was purple. That means they still need one more purple resource, and they can get there by using the dead man's compass from the anchor symbol on their die. So that means they have spent everything they need to take this chest, and of course they now have to redistribute all of their paid resources. Well, they can't put these down next to them, but they like the idea of putting these over here. In fact, they're going to stack them just like this. Uh, they can see that their opponents are not super close to the spot, and they are more likely to be able to pick these back up and use them again. In particular, this blue one, because of their blue talisman upgrade card. So, blue is done, and now the red player gets to go, and we can see they get four actions, but they are cursed with the Kraken, so if they want to move, that is going to cost them two actions each time. Well, they figure moving is costly, so they're just not going to move at all. Uh, this means they are going to start things off with loading, and they are going to pull this red and this green resource over for two of their four actions. After that, they are going to take this card over here, which is a red talisman, and they have to spend a red resource and one of any other color. In this case, they are going to spend the yellow and the red, and then they will take this upgrade, which means for them, they can now use red resources as if it was any type of resource for as long as they have this upgrade card. After that, they of course have to redistribute these, and they want to put the red one over here so that it is close to them, and they are hoping that the blue player would head up there and not down here. Uh, now they have to put this down somewhere as well, and they'll just put it over onto that empty spot. At this point, the red player has one action left, and we're not too surprised to see them take this red resource, considering it now counts as any resource for them. It's kind of surprising that the red player got the red talisman, and the blue player got the blue talisman. That was definitely not intentional. So, the red player is done, and we can't forget to bring out a new card. That should have technically happened right after they bought a card. So we can pull this one out, and it is a dead man's key. That costs any resource, and you can spend this at any point in the future as if it was one of any resource. Alright, it is now our turn, and we get three actions, plus if at the start of our turn we have two or more cards, then this astrolabe would give us two more actions. Now, at this moment, we have no cards, so that means we will not get this bonus. It's important to note that if you get cards in the middle of your turn, it still will not activate this astrolabe because that only happens at the start of the turn. 
So that means we are going to have three actions total. And unfortunately, this red player swooped in and picked up all of the resources that we were planning on getting. So I figure what we should probably do is certainly sail and probably head up here because there are more resources than down here in this lower part of the map. So let's move one, two times. And then for our third action, let's go ahead and pick this resource up. Well, that has used up all three of our actions, so our turn is done. This means we can put our die back into the pool, and we have now finished out the round, which means the red player is the admiral. So that means they can start the next round by rolling all of the dice. Let's see what our options will be this round. Well, it looks like that is two bottles and then one four action die. So Red has to figure out which ones they are going to keep and which ones they will give. And they like the idea of taking a bottle. Now at this point, they feel like the blue player could probably use the extra action versus the extra bottle. So they are going to give the bottle to the blue player and we will get this four. It is a pretty close thing overall, but this is the way the red player decided to pass these out. So Red can now start taking actions, and the first thing they will do is the message in a bottle action. So they get to grab a random one, and normally this would be in a stack, but I thought it'd be fun to splay them out like this. So the Red player will take this one here, and now they get three actions. Well, with the first of these actions, they are going to take this adjacent resource, and then with their second action, they are going to open up this silver box. Now that normally costs uh, two of the purple and one green, but remember, the red player has a red talisman, so they can use this red resource as if it was purple. So that means they now have to redistribute all three of these resources. And of course, they can peek at the back of this and add that to their treasure chest area. Well, they have considered where they want to put these down, and they're going to stack these two over here, and they'll put this red one on top over there. And now they still have one more main action, and with that, they will sail over here, where they are likely going to hope to pick up one or both of these red resources on their next turn. This means red is done, so now we can take four main actions. Well, when we look out here, we already have one yellow resource, and we could spend that to pick up this uh, action card down here, which is certainly good, or we could just try to open up the first gold chest of the game. Remember, those take a yellow, a blue, a white, and a red. So I think what we should do is sail here for one action, and then we can take this for a second action. Then we can go here for a third action, and then grab this blue for the fourth action. Now that is good because we are just one red resource away from opening up this uh, chest over here, and we have removed this blue from the board, and I am sure the blue player wanted to pick that up because, of course, their blue talisman makes that count as any resource. With that, our turn is done, so now the blue player can go, and they are going to start things off by taking a message in a bottle, and they'll take this one right here. Next up, they have three main actions they can take, but unfortunately for them, they don't have any great options over here. Things are getting pretty crowded with both of their opponents uh, taking up these spots. Now the blue player decides they are going to move over here for one action, and then with their second action, they will take a red resource. Now with their third action, they have decided they're going to pick up this dead man's key card. Now that is going to cost one of any resource, and they of course spend this red, and now they can redistribute it far away from the red player, who of course has that red talisman. So this has denied at least one of those red uh, resources from the red player, and of course the blue player gets a dead man's key, which can count as one of any resource, which could be really helpful for them the next time they open up a chest. So they have to redistribute this somewhere, and they'll put it way over here, uh, pretty much as far away from the red player as possible. At this point, they have finished out their three actions, and of course they do have to draw a new card, and this is a plunder card. It costs a green resource to take, and it lets you steal one resource from any ship. With that, the blue player is done with their turn, so now we have finished out the round, which means we are the admiral. So we can roll all three dice. And let's see what the options are for this round. Now that is interesting, actually. That is two curses and one anchor. Now we would really like an anchor because that could count as the one red resource we don't have. And cursing both of our opponents so that they move slower does seem like a pretty good thing. So yeah, let's go ahead and take this one and put the other two in front of our opponents. After that, we can now start by taking actions. 
and I think we should go here for one, and then for our second action, we can open up the first gold chest of the game. Remember, that takes a yellow, a white, a blue, and a red, and we can use this anchor symbol to activate the dead man's compass to give us the red that we do not currently have. So that means we are going to distribute these three resources right here, and we can peek at the back, and ooh, nice. Uh, on average, these gold chests have three coins in them, but this one has four. So let's now redistribute all three of these, and I think we should go up here. Uh, the reason for that is because our opponents are way down there, and we certainly want to get this blue one away from the blue player, considering they have that blue talisman card. So I think we can put this right over there, and then we can probably scatter these out a little bit. Um, I suppose if we actually kept them together, that would help us in trying to open up another one of these gold chests. Uh, there is a gold chest right over here, although it does have two things on top of it. Um, one of them is red, so I suppose we could stack this up and try to sail back over here, pick these up, and use it to open this. But that might be a lot of actions. But either way, I think I'm okay with burying this blue resource to the bottom of that stack. Now that we are done redistributing, we have taken two out of our three actions. And for our third action, I think let's pick up this green resource. Now we need a green and two purple to open up one of these silver chests. And remember, we have this message in a bottle, which will give us a purple. Now there's a purple right over there, so we could potentially use this, this, and that to pick up a silver chest on our next turn, or at least that is a good goal for us to try and aim for on the next turn. It's possible, of course, that we do something completely different once the board situation changes. All right, we are done with our turn, so now the blue player can go, and they get four actions, but all of their move actions will cost them two actions. So they can focus in over here, and for their first and second actions, they are just going to pick up these resources. They don't want the red player to have access to that red resource, because of course they have that red talisman. Now they have two more actions available to themselves, and they've decided they're actually going to use both of those actions to sail right over here, once again because this Kraken penalty makes that move cost two actions. After that, the blue player is done, and that means the red player can go, and much like blue, they have four actions, but they are cursed by the Kraken. Well, they are going to start things off by spending one action to take Clairvoyant. Now you'll notice this does not have a cost in resources, it just costs one action to take, and this gives them a one-time fortune ability to peek at any three unclaimed chests on the game board. After that, they can draw a new card from the top of the deck, and this one costs one yellow resource, and it is the Rat Bounty. So this says that the player who has this at the end of the game will get two coins for each rat that they have in their chests. After that, they are going to immediately use Clairvoyant. Now they can peek at three unclaimed chests, and they are going to start by taking a look at this one. And then the next thing they will do is peek at this one over here. After that, they get one more peek, and it will be over here. And now they can keep taking their turn. Now they have three actions left to take. And with the next one of these, they are actually going to purchase this Tailwind card by giving up this message in a bottle, which can be one of any resource. So that is going to be a blue resource, and then they can take Tailwind. Now they have two actions left, but before they do anything else, we have to draw another card from the top of the deck, and this is the White Talisman, which makes the white resource act as any type for the player who has it. And now they have two actions left, but before they do those, they are going to use this Tailwind to move their ship to any unoccupied ship location. In this case, they want to Tailwind over here so that they can capitalize on this stack of resources that we put there. Well, they still have two actions left, and with those, they are going to take a red and a white resource. All right, that has finished out their turn, and that means the round is over. So now the blue player can start the next round off by rolling all three dice. So let's see what our options are, and that looks to be a curse, a message in a bottle, and a dead man's compass. Now the blue player has to consider where these will all go. Well, they certainly don't want this curse, and they can tell that the red player wouldn't really care if they got cursed because they have a lot of good actions over here, whereas we don't. So they are going to curse us, which we certainly don't like the look of, and then between these two options, they don't want to give the red player a dead man's compass to make it even easier for them to unlock that gold chest. So they are going to keep that, which means the red player will get the message in a bottle die. Now that they are done assigning, the blue player can take three actions, and they also have access to the dead man's compass this turn.
with their first action, they are going to load up this blue resource. And then with their second action, they are going to spend their green resource in order to pick up the plunder card. This is a fortune one time use card that lets you steal one resource from any other ship. So they can look down here and add that in front of them. And remember, you have a limit of three cards, so they are now at that limit. Next up, they have to redistribute this and they'll put it right here. Now, at this point, they have taken two out of their three main actions, but before they take their third action, they want to use Plunder. That lets them steal one resource from any ship, and they want to target this white shovel resource from the red player. So that is going to be stolen and brought right over here to their own ship. And now they can use their third action alongside the Dead Man's Compass in order to unlock this golden chest. They have the blue, the white, and the red, so they just need a yellow resource, and this will act as that yellow resource. So that means they can take this and then redistribute all three of these resources. And they've decided to put all three of them down on top of this chest. Now it looks like they're trying to set up a possibility to open this one up on their next turn, or at least soon for them. And they've decided to bury the blue one a little bit in case somebody comes over here, they would take this one and the blue one would still be available to them. Uh, they could tell both of their opponents are one, two, three moves away from being able to get to the spot. So with a fourth potential move, then only one resource could be taken. So they can put this back over here. And I just realized they did forget to bring out a new card after they bought that plunder card. Sorry about that. So this should be here, and that is Man o' War. Now this costs two resources of any type, and it says that you may now carry up to five resources on your ship, and you can have up to four cards. Now this is a permanent upgrade, so this effectively does not take one of your card slots because you can have three other cards in addition to it. At this point, the blue player has taken their three actions, and they are now done with their turn. That means the red player can go, and they are going to start by activating Message in a Bottle. So they're going to take this one right over here, let's say, and then they can take three main actions. Now they have decided to start things off by drawing both of these two resources. And then with their third action, they're actually going to draw this off here. So that is going to finish out their turn, but they have unblocked this chest so that they could potentially open it up next turn as long as they were able to find it looks like a white shovel resource. Well, that was a pretty quick turn for the red player, and now we get to go. And the plus side of our turn is we get four actions. The minus side is that every time we move, we are cursed by the Kraken, and we have to use two of those actions. Now that is particularly bad considering I was hoping to move a couple times this turn. So I think instead, let's move once and with this move, let's go over here. Now that cost us two of our actions because of the Kraken. And now we have two more actions. Now what we should do, I think, is take this resource here and then let's buy the White Talisman card for our fourth and final action. That is going to cost one white resource and then one resource of any color. And now for the rest of the game, whenever we use the white resource, it can act as any type. Well, after paying these resources, we do have to redistribute them. And I think let's put them both right down here. That way on our next turn, we could go here and pick both of these up and then use that alongside this bottle in order to open up this silver chest. Uh, that's at least one uh, decent turn for us next turn, uh, but <laughs> things might change again. Uh, we were expecting to do more this turn, but that Kraken really got in our way. Either way, I'm still happy that we have this. Uh, having a talisman going forward is going to certainly make things more flexible for us. Now, at this point, we do have to draw another card to the market, and this one is a plunder card, and we already saw how this one works. It lets you steal any one resource from any ship. All right, our turn is done, and that means the round is over. So that means the red player is now the admiral, which means they can start this new round out by rolling the dice. Now, after they do that, they have to assign these. It looks like there's one cursed die, one uh, dead man's compass die, and then one message in a bottle option. They are going to give the cursed die to the blue player, and we are going to get a message in a bottle because they would like to have access to that dead man's compass. Next up, blue can take their three actions, and of course they do have access to the dead man's compass. So they can focus in over here, and you might expect them to use this dead man's compass as a white resource, considering that's all they need to open up this chest. And remember, one was plundered away from them by the blue player on their last turn. 
Now that seems like a good option, however, the red player was able to pull out this message in a bottle on their last turn, which gives them a white resource. So that works out really well for them. They can save this dead man's compass, and then when they spend this alongside a blue, a yellow, and a red, they have exactly what they need to open up this chest. So then this message in a bottle will be discarded, and they have to redistribute all three of these resources. Well, after thinking through their options, they are going to put the red resource over here, and they're going to stack this blue resource under the yellow on top of that chest. So two out of the three blue resources are now stuck way up here in the top right corner. At this point, the blue player can move on, and currently they've only used one action to take that chest. So they still have two actions left, and they are now going to take this rat bounty card, and they will do that with the Dead Man's Compass. Uh, they needed the yellow resource in order to make this happen. And remember, they happen to have a message in a bottle, which was the white resource they needed to take that chest. So they are using this to grab this card. And that means they will get two coins at the end of the game for each rat that they have in their chests. And considering they just took this, it seems very likely they have at least one rat in their area. After taking that card, a new one has to be revealed, and this is Wood Bounty. This says if you spend a green resource and then one of any other resource, you'll get two coins at the end of the game if you also have the most wooden chests or are tied for the most. Well, the red player still has one of their three actions left, and they are going to use it to simply move right over here. This means their turn is over, and now we get to go. Well, the first thing we want to do is definitely activate message in a bottle and take one of these. Remember, you can only have up to three of them at any point in time, and we have been holding on to this one for a while. Now we can take a random one, and I think we'll go with this one here. And, oh, that's interesting. This is an endgame scoring bottle. Now, instead of discarding this for something in the middle of the game, this will give us one coin at the end of the game for every set of the wood, silver, and gold chests that we have unlocked in our area. As you can see, we already have a wood and a gold, and we are actively trying to get a silver one done. So that was a great bottle to open up. Now, I think I'm just going to leave ours face up like that. Of course, you keep these face down so your opponents can't see them, but this way we can easily remember what our options are on future turns. All right, we can now take our three main actions. Well, we are very motivated to take a silver chest now, and fortunately there are a couple unblocked ones over here. So I think let's go there for one action, and then with our second and third actions, we can take these resources here. Remember, we have a white talisman, which means when we spend this white resource, it can be anything that we want. So that means that this could be a purple gun, and we could use that alongside this purple gun and the green to open up this silver chest. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen on this turn. We have spent all three of our actions, but it should be easy to do that on our next turn. Well, that's finished up our turn, and now the blue player can go. Now, they have four actions, but of course, they are cursed by the Kraken, which means moving will cost them two actions. Unfortunately for them, they really do have to move. There is nothing for them to do over here right now, so they are going to sail over there, and now they still have two actions left. They are now well positioned to take resources, and that is what they are going to do. In fact, they will do that for both of their remaining actions. So they have a white and a blue, and that has finished out their turn. This means the round is over, so the Admiral token can pass over to us, and now we can roll the three dice. So let's see what the options are, and that's interesting. There are two astrolabes and one four action die face. Now, the astrolabe will give a player two extra actions if they start their turn with two or more cards. Now, unfortunately for us, we currently only have one card, and both of our opponents have two. So no matter what, we are going to be giving an opponent a five-action die, which I certainly don't like the idea of. Now, we could keep the four and give both of these to our opponents, which means both of them will get five actions, um, which also sounds awful, but the opposite option means we take three actions and an opponent takes four. So, unfortunately, I think the best thing for us to do is to give these really good dice to our opponents. This certainly makes me feel like we should have another card, just in case something like that happens again, but either way, we can now take our actions. Now we have four to spend. Well, let's start off by taking this chest right here. That is going to take a green, a purple, and then one more purple, which of course happens because we have the white talisman. And now we can peek underneath it, and it has two coins. All right, so now we have to redistribute both of these resources. 
And I figure we'll put the green one out here and the white one on top of the other white one, which is quite close to us. Now we have three more actions available, so let's sail right over here and then spend our last two actions loading up two white resources, which of course can act as any resource for us. So that is nice and flexible. All right, that has used up all four of our actions, which means it is time for the blue player to go. Now, once again, this astrolabe gives them two extra actions if they have two or more cards, which they do. So they get five actions this turn, and so will the red player. Well, they're going to start off by loading up this red resource, and then for their second action, they are going to get rid of their dead man's key, as well as this red, this white, and this blue to open up their second gold chest of the game. The dead man's key is going to take the place of the yellow map that they needed. Now, this can be discarded. They can take a look at this chest, and then they have to redistribute all three of these resources. So that'll get added down there next to their other gold chest, and then when they do the redistribution, they want to put the red resource as far away as they can from the red player. They'll actually put it all the way over there, and then they'll put the white resource as far away as they can from us, and they're going to stack that over here because they can see the red player is probably trying to head down here to pick this up and also try to unlock this chest. Now they want to put the blue resource as close as they can to themselves, and now they still have three actions left, because up to this point they've only spent two. This means they can now sail over here and then pick up this green resource, which will make it even harder for the red player to open up that chest, and then with the blue player's fifth and final action, they're going to load up this blue resource. This means their turn is done, and now the red player can go, and much like the blue player, their astrolabe will activate, giving them five actions. In this case, their first action will be sailing over here, and then their second and third actions will be loading up the white and red resource. Now, they still have two actions left, and they have decided to spend the red resource as if it was green in order to pick up this plunder card. Now, they can do that, of course, because they have the red talisman, and then they are going to redistribute this over here so it's not adjacent to their ship, and then they will immediately use Plunder, which lets them steal a resource from any ship. Now, they are going to target the green player who targeted them a couple of turns ago, and they are going to grab this green resource, which, of course, the green player took from this area right under their nose. Now, at this point, the red player does have one action left, but they don't have the resources that they need to open up this chest just yet, so they're going to use that action to sail over here so that on the next turn, they could pick this up and then use all three of those in order to open up this chest as, of course, one potential turn option. Now, I am getting a little ahead of myself. We do need a new card over here on the market, and this is the Admiralty Bounty, which gives two coins if you have the fewest total chests, including ties. All right, the red player is now done with their turn, and that has finished out the round. So the new round starts with the blue player becoming the admiral, and let's see what they roll. Now that is interesting. Uh, two of the message in a bottles and another astrolab. Now they do not actually have two cards anymore. They only have one because they spent their dead man's key on the last round. So that means they are going to give themselves a message in a bottle, and they will give us the Astrolabe, unfortunately, uh, because, of course, we still only have one card, and the blue player has two, and then the red player will get a message in a bottle. So that worked out pretty well for them, and not so great for us, but either way, now the blue player can take their turn. And they are going to do the message in a bottle, and they'll take this one here, and then they can take three actions. With the first of these, they are going to load up a red resource, and with the second, they are going to open up this wooden chest. Remember, that takes a red and a green resource, but they have the blue talisman, which lets them use this blue as if it was green. So they can, of course, redistribute these and take this chest. That'll get added down here, and then they are going to put the blue resource on top of that stack, and the red one will go way over here in the top left. At this point, they have taken two actions, so now their third action will bring them here, where they are hoping to load some cargo on their next turn. This means that they are done, so now the red player can go, and they are going to start by doing message in a bottle, and they'll take this one here. That'll get added into their area, and now they can take three actions. 
Well, the first of these will be loading up this red uh, resource, and then the second one will be opening up this chest. That is a silver chest, so that takes a purple, a green, and another purple. So in this case, they will use a red instead of that purple because they have a red talisman. So that means they can take this chest, and then they have to redistribute these resources. In this case, they've decided to simply stack all three of them together and put them down over there. Now they do have one action left, and they are going to use that to sail over here, and now they are done with their turn. This means we can go, and unfortunately, we just get three actions. We don't get any bonus, and I think we need to not have that happen anymore. We currently have one upgrade card, and I think at this point, instead of picking up either of these chests like I was planning, let's take this Admiralty bonus card. At this moment, both of our opponents have four chests, and we have three, so that means all we'd have to do is make sure that we at least tie for having the least number of chests in order to have this turn into two extra coins, which is certainly a good thing. Now, this costs a white and another resource, so actually, I'm going to rewind this real quick, and before we take that, let's load up this green resource as our first action, and then with our second action, we can take this. Now, we of course have to spend a white and then another resource. That way, we can hold onto this white because, of course, it can count as any resource for us. So we can take this, and we now have two of these cards, and neither of these are discardable. You can, of course, discard any card at any point if you want to, but either way, having these two cards is important so that in the future, if Astrolabe uh, icons come our way, we can actually turn that into five actions instead of unfortunate turns like this one where we only get three. Either way, we now have to redistribute these two uh, resources, and we do still have one action left on our turn. Now we of course have a lot of different options available to us, but I think let's put this right over here, and then for our third and final action, let's sail back up in that direction. Things are going to be getting uh, pretty complicated down here, I think. The red player gets to go before us, and I just think that maybe heading up here to try and unlock some of these chests might make more sense. Now, especially when you consider the fact that we want to not have a ton of chests, we want to probably target the gold and silver ones instead of picking up more of the wooden chests. Either way, that has finished out our turn, although I once again forgot to bring out a new card. This one is Tailwind, and we've seen this one before. It lets you move to any open spot, but it does cost a blue resource to take. All right, our turn is done, and that's going to finish out the round. So now we can move into the new round where the red player is the Admiral. So let's see what they roll, and it looks like there is a curse, a dead man's compass, as well as a message in a bottle. Well, they are going to give us the message in a bottle, they are going to give the curse to the blue player, and they are going to keep the dead man's compass. Now they can take their turn, and they have three main actions available to them. Now they're going to start by loading up two resources, so it's purple and then red, and then with their third action, they are going to buy this Man of War card. Now that takes two resources of any color, and they are going to use the Dead Man's Compass that they have from their die to be one of those resources, and they will spend this purple to be the other one. Now this means for the rest of the game, they can carry up to five resources on their ship, and they can hold up to four cards. Uh, this of course counts as one of those cards. So they can now add this to their area, and then they have to redistribute this purple resource. After considering their options, they're just going to put it right over here, and that has finished out their turn, and now we can reveal another card from the top of the deck. In this case, that is another Dead Man's Key. Alright, that's finished up the red player's turn, and now we can take our turn, and let's start by drawing a message in a bottle, and let's take this one here. So this says, ooh, nice, it's going to be one of any resource when we discard it, so that is certainly something that could come in handy later on. After that, we can take three actions, and I think we should set our sights on unlocking this gold chest and potentially this silver one as well. Now, let's start off by uh, picking up this white resource for our first of three actions, then we can sail over here for our second action, and then for our third action, let's pick up this purple resource, because, of course, if we want to unlock that chest, we do have to uh, remove all of the resources from the top. Well, that was a pretty good setup turn for us, and that has finished the turn, so now it's time for the blue player to go. We can see they are cursed with the Kraken, but they do have four actions available to them. 
and considering they have a penalty for moving, they've decided not to move at all. They will just spend three actions loading up these three resources. After those three load actions, they still have one action left, and they want to buy the Tailwind card. Now that is going to cost them a blue resource, and they are going to redistribute it over here, and then they're just going to keep this. They figure being able to move to any unoccupied spot could be really powerful once we get into the later stages of the game, and as you can see, we are certainly over halfway done with the game anyway, so this could be worth a bunch of actions to jump over to a spot in order to get a crucial chest opened up. This also means they are back to having two cards, which means if they get an Astrolab die, that will be a five action turn instead of three. Now, after they took this, a new card has to come out, and it looks like this is another one of the free cards. This says, bury a resource. Now, it says you remove any one unblocked resource from the game. Now, at this point, there are three of each resource out here, so if somebody plays this, that would remove one of those from one of the types, which would make it a little bit harder to unlock certain types of chests. All right, the blue player has done four actions, and that has finished out their turn. This means the round has come to an end, and we can now start the next round by rolling the dice. So let's see what we get, and that is quite a bit of messages in bottles. Uh, two of them to be precise, and then one dead man's compass. Now when we look to assign these, this is not going to be totally straightforward. Obviously getting messages in bottles is a really good thing, but having the dead man's compass is effectively like having extra actions that we can count on, specifically actions where we have the resource of our choice. These bottles can be a wide variety of things, so I think we should probably take the thing that is guaranteed, even though these bottles could potentially give our opponents uh, things they really need, like points or resources in the moment that they need it. Alright, let's now take our three actions. Now our main goal is to open up this gold chest, but in order to do that, we have to clear the uh, resources off it, and when we do that, we have now put ourselves to the point where we are full up on our ship. Now, if we want to, we could try to offload something, but we would like to get this red resource as well. So I think instead, for our second action, let's spend this purple resource in order to buy this dead man's key. That can count as any one resource when we spend it, and then we have to redistribute this purple resource. Now, I kind of feel like we should maybe put it down over here just to make that wooden chest a little bit harder to be opened. And now we can reveal another card. In this case, we have found Swashbuckler. Now remember, this is a prototype, so this one has some handwriting on it, and it says that you can use this once in order to reposition your die to the side of your choice. Well, at this point, we have spent two out of our three actions, so now I think let's open up this chest. Now that is, of course, going to take a yellow, white, blue, and red resource, and remember, we have the Dead Man's Compass, and we have the Dead Man's Key. So that means we can use these two over here along with a yellow and one of our white. So that means this could be red and this one over here could be blue. And that means we're spending just two of our resources in order to take this chest. So we can flip it over and it has the expected three coins behind it. So we can now discard this and then after that we have to redistribute all of the resources that we spent. And in this case that was a white and a yellow. Well, let's put this yellow one on top of that silver chest to make it a little bit more annoying to get to, kind of blocking it from our opponents, and then we can put the white one over here so that it is nice and close to us. All right, that has finished out our turn, so now the blue player can go. Now they are going to start with a message in a bottle action. This is going to be their third bottle, so that means they should probably consider spending these if, of course, these are bottles that can be spent. Remember, some of them you will save until the end of the game. Either way, they are going to take this one right over here, and then they'll add that to the other two that they already have. Next up, they have three actions to take, and they will sail here for one, they will load up for two, and then they will load up again for their third. Uh, now at this point, they are going to spend one of their bottles, that's going to be this one here, that shows a one action symbol on it, so that's going to give them another action, and they are going to use that to open up this chest. They are going to do that by spending a green, a purple, as well as a blue alongside their blue talisman, so that acts as the other purple that they need. This means they can take this chest, and this is their fifth chest of the game so far. So they can now redistribute, and they'll put the blue one here, 
the purple one will go there, which will make it a little bit harder to get down and unlock that chest. And then the green one will get placed onto uh, this spot right over here. All right, the blue player is done, so now the red player can go. They are going to start off by taking a message in a bottle, and then they have three actions. Now, they are going to start by loading up a green resource. Then they are going to move twice, and that is going to finish out their turn. Well, the red player is done with their turn, so that has finished out the round. And now going into the next round, the blue player is the admiral. Now, it's worth noting that currently out on the map, there are only five chests left. And remember, as soon as there are only three chests left, the game will end immediately. So that is coming up pretty close. Now, at this point, the blue player can roll the dice. So let's see what our options are going to be. In this case, there is an astrolabe, a four, as well as a curse. Now they have to assign, and they are going to take the astrolabe, give us the curse, unfortunately, and then give the four over to the red player. After that, they can take their turn, and they do have two or more cards, so the astrolabe will activate, which means they actually have five actions they can take this turn. Well, the very first thing they want to do is use Tailwind. That lets them move their ship to any unoccupied ship location. With this, they are going to move right over here, and then for their first and second actions, they are going to load up twice from these two adjacent spots. Then for their third action, they will go here, and their fourth action will bring them over there. Now for their fifth action, they can take this blue resource. This means they now have everything that they need in order to unlock this golden chest, but the problem is they are out of actions and this chest is blocked. Well, they are not done with their turn just yet. They are now going to use another bottle, which shows an action on it, and they are going to use that action in order to take bury a resource. This lets them remove any one unblocked resource from the game, and they are going to immediately use this to bury this yellow map resource. That means this is removed from the game permanently, and this is no longer blocked. Now, after that, a new card comes out, and this one is Pathfinder. This costs one resource of any type, and it says you can use this card to open a blocked chest. So that would let you actually open up something underneath, which could be pretty important. Now, at this point, the blue player has spent their five actions plus one, but they are not done because they do have one more bottle, and believe it or not, they did indeed draw three of these plus one action bottles. They used one earlier on in a previous turn. So they are using two of them this turn. That means they have a seventh action this turn, and they can use that to take this chest. So they piece together a pretty big turn here. They, of course, have to spend the white the red, the blue, and the yellow to make this happen, and now they can take this chest. Well, they now have to redistribute all four of these resources, and with this, they are going to make life as hard as possible for the rest of us. They're going to put the red over here, further blocking that chest, although this Pathfinder does exist, which could potentially help out. They are then going to put this yellow on top of that green, then they are going to put this white on top of that purple, making this chest even harder to get to, and then they will put the blue one down onto this chest over there. Well, that has finished up a massive turn for the blue player, and now play will move on to the red player, who can take four actions. Overall, they are really happy this Pathfinder card came out, because they are going to spend their first action and this white resource right here in order to take that card. Now they have to redistribute this white resource, and they will put it over here, and then we can see a new card from the deck, and this one is a lucky find. This says that you have to spend a blue and then one other resource to move any two unblocked resources from any of the yellow X's out here on the map to your ship, so that effectively turns two resources into two others, uh, which could potentially match or not. Uh, I don't think this is going to come into effect now. It's a bit late in the game for that. And then red can add this to their area, where they normally would have a limit of three cards, but this Man of War lets them go up to four. Now, after that one action, they are going to spend Pathfinder, and they are using it to open a blocked chest. As you can see, this chest is very blocked, but that Pathfinder lets them get around it. They can open this up by getting rid of a red and a green, and they will redistribute those right over here, and then take this chest. Now, the moment this happened, we can look out to the map and see that there are just three unclaimed chests left out here, which means, unfortunately for us, the game ends immediately. Uh, the red player does not even finish out their turn, and we don't get to take our turn at all. 
With the game now over, each player can count up all of their coins. We can start over here with us. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on the four chests that we got. Then we have an 11th one because we have one set of the three different types. And then we do indeed have the least number of chests. So that will give us two more coins, which gets us up to a final score of 13. Next up, the blue player does not have anything special going on. They just have the coins from their chests and they get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So they have one more coin than us. And finally, we have the red player. Now they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine coins from their chests. Then they have one coin from this bottle right over here. And on top of that, they have two rats. Now they were the player that picked up the rat bounty. So each rat is going to be worth two more coins to them. So that is four more coins, which means the red player also has a score of 14 and that ties them with the blue player for the win. Uh, so no matter what, unfortunately, we are not going to win, but we can now move to the tiebreaker, and the first tiebreaker goes to the player with the most cards. As you can see, the red player does have three compared to the one of blue, so red is going to win that tiebreaker and win the game. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, even though we did come in last there at the end. Uh, now, as far as consolation prizes are concerned, it was a very close game. Uh, obviously, our opponents were tied, and we were right behind them. And that was kind of interesting to see, considering uh, the winning player was able to get coins from the rats because of a card they picked up. Um, we got conditional coins based off of having sets of different um, uh, chests, and then we also got points because we, or I guess coins, uh, because we had the least number of chests going into the uh, final scoring. So we were able Able to piece together a good score from those different ways and then one player just got points for their chests and in fact all of their chests uh, were the uh, average amount I think so it was just kind of the expected value for them and they were still tied for the win there at the end so there's a lot of ways to angle around to try and squeeze out points and while we were playing this game we were obviously trying to set ourselves up and make things harder for our opponents and if I'm being honest I think I probably could have done a better job of that uh, this is the first time that I played the game and I think uh, understanding the nuances of how to really get in your opponent's way especially when you redistribute those resources, um, is not something that became super apparent to me until uh, part of the way through this uh, playthrough anyway. And I think I could have done a lot better job at uh, being more aggressive with those. Um, now, we did certainly try to block, and our opponents did as well. And there were some good blocking moments and um, some pretty cool uh, moments where a lot of stuff happened on turns where players were able to piece together card play actions with bottle special actions in order to do some pretty unexpected things. And then when the dust settled, the scores were super close there at the end. So I think this video did a good job of showing how a game of Sea of Nadia goes, and I think that's going to wrap up all my thoughts on this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.